Uh, so I saw you on the telly this morning talking to uh, Good Morning Britain, uh, and you were making the point that uh, this, the migrant problem continues. They continue, that still they come across the channel in their uh, dinghies, uh, 10 by 10 by 10 and hundreds by hundreds, and uh, the French do nothing to stop them. You pointed the finger square at the French for letting these people uh, get on their dinghies and, in fact, helping to contribute to uh, a criminal people smuggling industry mm. that's making billions of pounds a year. Yes, that's right. I, I blame the French here and I say they are culpable in creating and aiding and abetting the organized gangs, criminal lifestyles of those involved in it. And if you look at what the United Nations said, during the, the period of 2016-17, organized crime illegally moved 2.5 million people across the globe and made $7 billion. And with that $7 billion, they're able to uh, undertake sex slaves, get involved in drug trafficking, involve themselves with links with transportation of uh, uh, illicit goods, and even up to terrorism. And so when France permits the illegal actions of funded people coming from France to the United Kingdom, they are aiding and abetting this multi-billion dollar organized criminal gang system. Yes, uh, they're allowing crime to happen. And presumably on their, uh, their their thinking is, oh, well, we'll just shift this over to the British. They can look after this. I was just saying to Ash before you came on, Stephen, that there are uh, reports that when these dinghies get to around about the middle of the Br English Channel, and in other words, you go from French waters to British waters, that there are stories of the French uh, French lifeboats that, like pushing them into mm. British waters so that we can deal with it. So they're just elbowing this problem at us, whereas they, they, they under international law, have got responsibilities themselves. Under international law, they have clear responsibilities. They... they do not have to just allow them to float into another area. They, they can pick them up. And as you know, if you saw what was happening from Libya to Spain and Italy and Greece, there were many of the boats being picked up in their own international waters. And there was demands, whilst I was a member of the European Parliament, that's exactly what the European border forces should do. So when the French are saying that they can't turn them around and pick them, pick them up, that goes contrary to what they were saying in the European Commission, the European Council, and also in the European Parliament. So that, to me, is a blatant lie. And there are probably three, maybe four reasons, Ash, for why they, 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 they can do this. First of all, economic. They don't want to carry the cost of having to house and fund the illegal migrants. Secondly, political. They don't want the political distress in their towns along the borders of Calais. Uh, they're creating an open door for Marie Le Pen's parties. And thirdly, some are arguing that they want to use this as a negotiating tool on fishing rights, ultimately in the Brexit right. negotiations. If it is, it's wholly, uh, completely wrong. And I think that is why we can't trust the French at this particular moment. But aren't they travelling through safe countries anyway before they get to France? Aren't France going to say so? Yeah, and that, actually that's, that comes down to another particular international uh, uh, legal issue. The, if we have genuine asylum seekers, and no one is, 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 is saying that all of these people coming over are genuine asylum seekers, we do know that the vast number of them are economic migrants and there are genuine asylum seekers in there. But under the Dublin Convention then it, once they arrive in a safe country, they're supposed to seek asylum there. And those countries are supposed to provide the legal framework to, to allow asylum. By not doing so, they're ignoring international law. And again, it comes down to the fact that none of these countries want to have them in. Just before you go, Stephen, uh, we've got a few minutes left, but uh, time is short. Uh, when these migrants get here, we're now seeing reports uh, that uh, we pick them up at the at the ports, put them into luxury coaches, take them to hotels, and we're currently, according to some reports, putting up 48,000 of these people in hotels because they arrive here as uh, illegal immigrants and immediately declare themselves to be uh, asylum seekers. Uh, and Pretty Patel uh, seems to me on this border business to be... Uh, 
talking the talk but not walking the walk this problem is just getting worse and worse and worse isn't it this problem is getting worse and i identified this in way back in 2014 when i attended the first uh, opening of the Sangat camp when we paid two million to the French to help create that camp. And six months later, it was full. And then we saw them all trying to, with organized crime, get on the back of lorries, using caravans, and are getting through the tunnel and across on the ferries. This is just an extension of that. In 2015, I saw hotels in Stockport being filled by asylum seekers at that time. And now it could be that we start to run out of hotel space to cover them. I think the detention centres have 23,500, they're full. So where are we going to put them? And, and that becomes a major issue of infrastructure as well as cost. No wonder Serco and other large corporates are rubbing their hands because they know that there's billions of pounds to be made in housing illegal migrants. And that's one of the big costs about it. We should stop it, but we need to raise this with the issue and with the French. And if not, then use our Navy to stop them coming across. Very last question, very quickly, uh, Stephen. Uh, you must be disappointed with the performance of the Home Secretary on this issue. I am disappointed with the government because at the moment it seems to say to me that the UK government is not up to the task of stopping unlawful immigration. And although they're not aiding and abetting in the fr same way that the French are, by not enforcing the law and preventing these people coming in, we are making misery, not only for millions across the globe, who were caused by the impact of organised crime, were causing misery to people in this country and the taxpayer is having to pay huge amounts too. I agree. We have a, a sort of escalating problem on two fronts, I think. Uh, thank you so much for your time, uh, Stephen, as always. Yeah, thanks, that Steve. was uh, Stephen Wolfe, former UKIP and Conservative MEP for North West England.